all this Alvin Kamara trade stuff might actually just be fake news. We'll dive into that. Also, it looks like the Robert Quinn deal keeps getting better and better. New details on his contract. I'm Thomas Mott. This is The Thomas Mott Show. What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome to The Thomas Mott Show on a Friday. And if you didn't think the trade deadline could get any more fun than it has the past couple of years, it's way more fun this year for Philadelphia. Not only did they make a big move with Robert Quinn, more on his contract a little bit later, they is I mean, there's a lot of rumors about them making another move for a potential running back. The question is, what's real? What's fake? What's true? What's fan fiction? We're going to dive into that today here on The Thomas Mott Show. Let's just start with uh, an honest look at overall the situation with the Philadelphia Eagles and the New Orleans Saints and this idea that the Eagles are trying to go ahead and trade for Alvin Kamara. We talked about this on the show yesterday, and I emphasize on that show that really there is not a true legit source saying Philadelphia is actively trying to get Alvin Kamara. I'm honest with you guys. If Adam Schefter tweets it, it's a true source in my opinion. If somebody without a blue check mark tweets it, Hey, we can talk about it, but there's no guarantee. And a great example of this is this ML football account. Now, the ML football account has been right in the past. I'm not discrediting this as a complete hoax Twitter account that doesn't know anything that they're talking about that just makes up stuff. I mean, this is an independent NFL reporter who probably has some insiders, right? Just because you're not Adam Schefter does not mean you do not have inside sources. And so when he talks about trade stuff, you can take it for a grain of salt. You can take it for what it's worth, but that's as far as you can go until it's actually tweeted out there by a legit NFL source. You can only go so far. And so this is a great example here on this Twitter thread of trying to figure out what's real and what's fake in the Kamara situation. Here's the update as of just a couple of hours ago. Breaking. Trade talks between the Eagles and Saints about running back Alvin Kamara has heated up. According to a league source, New Orleans would like their first round pick back from Philly and more in return for Pro Bowl back. GM Howie Roseman wants to get this done. I saw this and I said, this is clearly a smokescreen. Whether he's actually getting legit sourcing, but they're telling him false information, or he's making stuff up, this is insane because there's a 0% chance that right now, current GM Howie Roseman would give up a first round draft pick, the Saints top five draft pick, for a running back who's due way too much money next year, pending legal issues, and honestly, he's good, but not worth, you know, the fifth overall draft pick. Then, they retweeted or subtweeted themselves and updated, quote, to clarify, Jim High Roseman has no plans on giving the Saints back their pick, but he wants Alvin Kamara and wants to get a deal done before the deadline. That sounds a little bit more realistic. I, I, I do believe that he's calling around. I do believe Philadelphia wants to add a running back, but giving up a first-round draft pick for Alvin Kamara was always ridiculous, and when I saw that tweet originally, I think that he he also saw that that was a little ridiculous and amended the tweet by saying that they're not going to give back the first round draft pick, but are trying. The question now is, what is a legit offer for Alvin Kamara? For me, I wouldn't give up anything more than a fourth or a fifth round draft pick. Now, Philadelphia doesn't have a fourth or a fifth round draft pick now because of the Robert Quinn trade for a fourth. And so you'd have to kind of work some things and figure some things out. Is he worth a third? I'm just not sure. It really is going to come down to if Howie Roseman or how bad Howie Roseman wants a running back, what he's willing to go ahead and give up. Now, Shane Hall, or Shane Half, excuse me, has a great tweet, uh, quote tweeting the one from ML Football, and he kind of breaks down exactly what I just said. Quote, there's a 0% chance that the Eagles, a team who doesn't value running back, is giving up a top 10 pick to acquire a 27-year-old running back who's never had a 1,000-yard rushing season on the second highest contract in the NFL. Boom. Exactly. Now, I would push back a little bit and say the Eagles do value running back. That's why they're making phone calls. That's why they did call for Christian McCaffrey last week. That has been confirmed. But they don't value it enough to give up a first-round draft pick to go ahead and do so, right? You want to go all-in this year, and Philadelphia has, but you don't want to go all-in and really mortgage the future away, and the future being a first-round draft pick, or giving Alvin Kamara, what, $19 million next year and some ridiculous cap number that is just way too much for the Philadelphia Eagles. So here's the breakdown. Here's where I'm at on Kamara. Would I like Kamara? Yes. Would I like a lot of the other running backs, Kareem Hunt, David Montgomery? Yes. But would I give up more than a third-round draft pick for Kamara? Absolutely not. And so Howie Roseman has got to take those two things and figure out exactly what is going on. I do believe this is real, though. I do believe Howie Roseman is calling around. I'll show you why here in just one second. But I want to just emphasize, just because you see a tweet out there, doesn't mean it's true, doesn't mean it's false, but you have to kind of take it for what it is as the trade deadline gets closer. A lot of smoke gets thrown out by NFL teams, by different reporters who try to go ahead and force deals or get deals done. Thumbs up for the NFL trade deadline, but by the way. The more thumbs up, YouTube loves the thumbs up button. Help us out here on the Thomas Mott Show. I'd really, really appreciate that. If you give it a thumbs up, uh, the show can be seen by more people, according to YouTube. So that's great news. Okay. 
Now, ML Football has another tweet, and so again, we will take this for what it is, but it is interesting. Quote, the Eagles continue to look for safety depth and have talked to the Texans about versatile DB Desmond King per lead source. Philadelphia is considered a serious threat to get a deal done with Houston for the former All-Pro DB and punt returner. Interesting that you circle punt returner here because that's one thing Philadelphia desperately needs. From a defensive back perspective, would Desmond King be safety help? Would he be corner help? He's played both throughout his career. Not sure what to go ahead and make of this, but I think it does tell you that Philadelphia, again, is very interested in making sure that there are zero holes on this football team. And you can argue one of the biggest holes that they have right now is backup safety, right? Because uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson went down, in comes Kayvon Wallace, and we all know Kayvon Wallace is leagues below what a starting level safety should actually be. And so a fear could be, if you have an injury, Kayvon has to come in, and then you're worried about the whole situation in terms of, uh, you know, what could possibly go down with the Philadelphia Eagles. So it's definitely very interesting in terms of what is going on with Howie Roseman and the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm trying to figure this stuff out. And as soon as we know, I will go ahead and get a Thomas Mott show, an emergency one up, as you guys know. Should be sure to subscribe with the uh, red button down below. Now, again, if you're telling me in the comment section, Thomas, where's the actual sourcing that Philadelphia is trying to be active right now? Here is some legit reporting from Fox Sports' Jay Glazer earlier this week saying, quote, I talked to Howie Roseman about this. He said he's definitely going to start making calls around the NFL. But really, where is there? Uh, uh, they're a really solid team. They have great depth. Maybe they add a running back to the mix, but not some big, bold move. I just don't see what's out there for them at this point because their roster is so strong already. And that's very well said, right? So clearly, straight from the horse's mouth, according to Jake Glazer, Howie is trying to go ahead and make some moves. He is trying to go ahead and make this team a lot better. The question is going to be, what are they willing to give up and who actually is available? I'm really kind of sold on Kareem Hunt or David Montgomery. To me, if there is one final move left for the Philadelphia Eagles before the NFL trade deadline, it is a running back. It's not Kamara because he's too expensive. You get a Montgomery, you get a Hunt, you bring him in, and they're kind of the second fiddle to Miles Sanders, who are more of a power style, especially David Montgomery, versus what Miles Sanders is able to do uh, currently in the National Football League. So just keep an eye on all this stuff, guys. I'm telling you, stay tuned, hit your notification bell, because things are getting crazy, and the National Football League, as always, the trade deadline can get really, really nuts. Okay, what's also nuts is this article you see on TFM right now, uh, a DraftKings link for yours truly. Yes, DraftKings. We're making big moves here on the Thomas Mott Show. There's a great promo right now for DraftKings on the what we're calling the Battle for Pennsylvania, Steelers versus Eagles, coming up on Sunday. And it's very simple. You see it here. Bet $5 on the Battle of PA. Get 200 if the Eagles win or if your bet hits, essentially. And so it is true. Like they say, legally cannot lie to you. To claim this offer, you sign up by clicking here. Link will be down below in the description box. Of course, sign me up, register a deposit $5 plus, and then place $5 plus money line bet on the Eagles versus Steelers game and get $200 back if you pick the winner. That's $200 in addition to your winnings. Definitely go ahead and jump in on this deal. This is a fantastic overall betting option for those of you who are in legal betting states and are of age. That's important there. And it's DraftKings, right? This is the... I mean, Crazy stuff here. DraftKings link. Definitely jump in and claim this offer. The link will be down below me in the description box. Five bucks to win 200 plus is a really, really good promotional offer. And I appreciate uh, what's going on with TMF and our TFM, excuse me, and DraftKings. Okay, I want to move over to a little bit of details on the Robert Quinn situation. We got a lot more information this morning on his current contract situation and how great it is for the Eagles. This is this is what Nick Stone, who replied to this tweet, is saying. Howie Roseman is a wizard. You're a wizard, Howie, here. You see Haggard says to uh, Howie Potter there. It's a great reply to the tweet, and here's why. Ian Rappaport, quote, when the Eagles traded for Robert Quinn, it was the culmination of a long negotiation for a top D end. As GM Howie Roseman was his usual deal-making self, along with the deal, the sides mutually agreed that Quinn be a free agent after 2022, cutting off his final two, two contract years. If that is not the best thing you've heard all day as an Eagle fan, I do not know what is. The Eagles would have been on the hook. $12 million next year, 13 in 2024, for a 33 and then 34-year-old defensive end. Now, Quinn is great. We know that. He's going to be absolutely fantastic as an Eagle. I'm expecting big things even starting this weekend against the Pittsburgh Steelers, but you did not want to go ahead and pay him or guarantee to have to pay him the next couple of seasons. Now, essentially, Quinn can come in, see how great it is to be in the Eagles organization, maybe go in a Super Bowl, and then come back and sign a veteran fair trade deal with the Eagles if he wants to, or if Quinn doesn't turn out, you just let him go. It's like, okay, I appreciate you. 
See ya, you're gone. A lot of people are talking about how this is, um, you know, the Howie or the uh, Chris Long situation. I see Quinn more of a, as a starter and BG coming off the hamstring injury this week, talked about that yesterday, as being in that Chris Long role. Now, they're going to, of course, very much, uh, let's just say, mix in at the defensive end. There isn't a true starter and a true backup. They're both starters, and they're just going to rotate in there along a very active Eagle defensive line. But the fact you're not tied to 13 or $14 million the next couple of years with an aging defensive end, and despite how good we think he's going to be, is really, really good news. That's why That's why Howie's the GOAT, man. That's why Howie Roseman has had the best offseason in recent GM NFL history. I cannot think of another offseason where you've had a season that is this good. Maybe maybe when Denver got Peyton Manning, that might be you know, when Elway was running things in Denver, that might be the last time we saw an offseason come together as good as uh, the Eagles had this offseason and really into the season as well as we're looking at the NFL trade deadline. Okay, thumbs up for that. That is absolutely fantastic. Be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I want to finish with our National League story of the day and the disintegration of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as they lost 27-22. This does matter for the Philadelphia Eagles. If you're an Eagle fan, stay tuned for this. Baltimore winning last night. It didn't put the nail in the coffin for the Bucs, but... Essentially, it put the nail in the coffin for the Bucks, And you can make the argument that all the drama with Giselle is, you know, in Tom Brady's head, and rightfully so. If you've been through that that sort of, sit, of sit, excuse me, situation, it's very stressful. There's a lot of things going on. And so you can make that excuse. But you can also just simply say Todd Bowles is not a very good head coach. That's been clear. You saw what happened with the Jets, and yet the media anointed him as like, oh, he's going to be so great with, with the Bucks. Clearly, he's not. They've been banged up incredibly bad on the offensive line. They're horrible r running the football. Brady seems to be missing a step. And defensively, they're they're not a top-five defense like you expected them to be going into the year. All this combines into a football team that, yeah, sure, maybe they can still sneak in as a wildcard team or win their division because the NFC South is just that bad. But you would love to see, I don't want to jinx myself here, You'd love to see Brady and the Bucks at the link in the divisional round because the Eagles can get after Tom Brady and affect him. They can match up well with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, and they can run all over a defense that used to be good against the run and is starting to struggle a little bit over the past couple of seasons. I texted somebody last night, and I said, the Eagles' two playoff games, if they were to be the one seed, could easily be like Bucks, at, Bucks in Philadelphia and then Jimmy G and the Niners in Philadelphia in the NFC Championship game. Bucks in Philadelphia or Kirk Cousins in the in the uh, Minnesota Vikings in the NFC Championship game. It's not going to be a juggernaut run to get to the Super Bowl as it currently stands right now in the NFC, which is absolutely crazy and really, really good news. Okay, we'll keep an eye on what's going on at the NFL trade deadline, as we always do here on the Thomas Mott Show. Eagles or not, NFL or other, other NFL team or not. I'm going to, of course, keep you guys up to date here on your daily, hopefully, drive to or from work. Thankfully, it's the weekend, so your drive to and from the golf course this weekend or whatever it is. Plenty more stuff coming up here, including a look at the Steelers and the Eagles on Sunday, which is going to be a very, very good game. All right, for Thomas Mott, or I'm Thomas Mott, I should say. This has been the Thomas Mott Show. See you.